Uh, the MPSL doesn't expand to Miami anytime soon for Cleveland's sake. <laughs> Might be still too soon for that, Russ. <laughs> Ball thrown in. Tagaloa flicks back towards his own goal. Vinny Bell one on one with Tyler Allen. Marcus Hansen gives help. Ball's played back to Manfoot. Manfoot possesses, finds O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan swings the ball towards the box. It's not enough on it. Moraldo plays the ball forward beyond Fiamali and back towards Sean Sikic and Spencer Semple. You know, so far what you'd really want to see FC Buffalo kind of change is uh, getting Ian Mort involved. Last year, uh, Ian Mort was a really, really big component of uh, FC Buffalo's midfield. High energy player, strong in the tackle, able to go forward and, and contribute a few goals even. Uh, but right now, uh, the, the play's been kind of centered towards the wings and not so much within the center of the park where FC Buffalo excelled last year. A couple more things about Manfoot. He's, uh, he's a Syracuse Silver Knight in the MIS, in the uh, Major Indoor Soccer League. And uh, <laughs> he also trained with Pachuca in Mexico. Oh, really? So he's a, he's a pretty well-traveled player for just being barely 20 years old. So I wonder that's if a, he knows uh, Paco Torres. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very possible. Yes. Liam Callahan with the ball, wearing the striker shirt for a center back. Kind of an interesting choice. Callahan to serve the ball upfield. He wins a throw-in, much to Vinny Bell's chagrin. Nap heaves it forward, Fimwali posting up on O'Callaghan. Cicerone now pressuring Zach Martin, who lets the ball roll to Semple. Semple going with the, the, the Peter Check headgear today, huh? Yes, yes, safety first. And that's, for, you, for all those keeping track at home, this is the second game in a row that FC Buffalo has played against a goalie in a pink jersey. That's right, Danny Mudd favored, uh, favors the pink jersey. Ian Mort wins the ball in midfield, regroups. Picks out Fumawale, checking back a good ball to Brian Knapp. Squares the ball, Tyler Allen streaking up the left side. He has plenty of room to run. The Point Loma Nazarene sophomore plays it into the box. Too far away from Cicerone and Semple grabs it. Some decent build-up play through the middle for FC Buffalo there, but you want to see a bit of a better, not final ball given where he was in the, uh, in the field, but uh, maybe a few more touches to build up and, and put some pressure on Cleveland's defense. A good crowd here today at Dembski. This is the first game that FC Buffalo has ever played at Dembski, uh, which is on the campus of Canisius College. Pretty nice turf field, all in all. Yep, no football lines this year. Beautiful day. Should be a good start to a great summer of uh, soccer in Buffalo. Ball played back to Cassis. Sees Moraldo. Moraldo away from pressure. Ian Moore checks back. A good tackle by Tom back for Cleveland. Ball's played wide. Here's 17. Adam Mitchell on the wing. Bobby Ross plays dangerously toward his own yeah. net. It's grabbed by Cassis calmly. A little bit of a breeze today. Just got to keep in mind the, uh, the ball's played back towards the goalkeeper. Here's Cicerone lying a little bit deep. Sees Tagaloa. Tagaloa sees Moraldo on the right. Moraldo plays Ian Mort. Mort keeps the ball in play. Sees Tagaloa. Good ball to Fimawali. Fimawali's touch eludes him, however, and he wins it back. Back to Tagaloa. Tagaloa, small ball to Cicerone. Pulled to the ground, but a play on. Marcus Hansen one-on-one -on -one with O'Callaghan. Pushed aside, and Antonio Manfoot runs it down. Tries to play the ball away from danger, but Tyler Allen's there. Allen swings the ball in, blocked by O'Callaghan. Here's Cicerone again. Pushed to the ground by TJ Welch, and he wins a free kick this time. It was advantage the first time, but he won the free kick on this occasion. Yeah, the, uh, the word's out on Cicerone uh, within the Cleveland defense. Follow him hard, follow him often. Speaking with Cicerone, uh, just before the season started, his his main goal for, for being in Buffalo this year is to get stronger and faster. Yes. And that's one of the reasons why he chose playing here for FC Buffalo instead of playing with the Michigan Bucks or even Detroit City FC, which would have been an interesting story had that occurred. Yes. Uh, but now, since he's playing here, he's able to work out with the University of Buffalo strength and conditioning staff. And that'll allow him, he's 5'9", 160 maybe. and. I think if he wants to take a next step, he needs to definitely add some muscle to that frame. Yeah, I mean, he's a young kid, and he's, he's going to grow into his body. But he, his, his soccer mind's already there. He just needs to, uh, like you said, get that, get that size, get that strength on the ball. Free kick by Moore, driven into the box. Semple with a diving save. A good hit by Ian Moore from 30-ish yards out. I'm not sure Semple was expecting that ball to be cracked on net. Yeah, when in doubt, push it out. Just enough flair. Yeah. Brian Knapp, another throw in from the left wing, heaves it in the box. O'Callaghan gets a piece, but it 
be a corner. Trickles out of bounds for a corner kick. FC Buffalo is first for the day. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm just looking at the field picking up the ball. Yeah, yeah. Buffalo looking better over the past five minutes. Again, co combining well. Cicerone's more involved, drawing those fouls in the center of the pitch and uh, winning this corner. Cicerone, it seems like he's their designated set piece taker. Almost exclusively against Deary, he took the set pieces. Now he's in swinging here from the left side. Plays the ball short to Brian Knapp. Cleveland's defense converges on him. It's blocked, but Cicerone keeps the ball. Marked by Vinnie Bell, clears it in from the touchline, a dangerous ball across the box. Yeah, Cicerone, very good in tight spaces. Fimo Wally dis dispossessed, and Cleveland now on the counterattack. Tom Beck sees Manfoot. Manfoot's in space. Manfoot is dispossessed by Tyler Allen, though. A good recovery by the FC Buffalo left back. Yeah, it could have been a dangerous counter there, but uh, Buffalo just diffused that well. Knapp picks out Mort. A strong step by a Cleveland defender, Tommy Beck. One two more up for Moraldo. Moraldo tries to get forward. Mort pokes it between the two of them. Moraldo plays Fimo Wally. He's a chance for FC Buffalo breaking down the right side. No numbers in the box, however. One on one for Fimo Wally. Corner. Plays the ball. Looked like it yeah, might have that was a corner. Might have glanced off Zach Martin, but it's ruled a goal kick by the assistant. Fans, plan your family's financial future with the folks FC Buffalo owners trust with their money. Axe Advisors of Buffalo, proud to partner, and contact Lou Nutrino or Rick Sheev today. Really nice setting today. We're right on the campus of Canisius College. We've got the uh, Hamlin Park neighborhood to our right. Clear skies for the most part. It's a nice temperature too to play soccer in Russia. Oh, beautiful! It's, it's, yeah, it's probably maybe high 50s, low 60s. It's it's not too hot, not a lot of humidity. It's it's a pretty ideal game for a soccer day for day for a soccer match. Definitely. Mort wins the ball from Welch. Pushes, tries to nutmeg Antonio Manfoot, who <laughs> sees it coming, plays a through ball in the direction of Bell, a little too tight. The ball bounces out. Bell wins it back though. Chris Fairley now plays the ball square for Vinnie Bell. Vinnie Bell one-on-one -on -one with Moraldo. Moraldo pokes the ball away, but it's going to be a third corner kick now for AFC Cleveland. 0-0, 14th minute here at Dembski Sports Complex. Yeah, Bell just demonstrating some uh, good uh, good presence on the ball for, uh, for a big man, winning that corner there. Man foot again, taking his third corner. In swinger into the box, won by Bobby Ross. Bobby Ross, I think, without a doubt, is, is FC Buffalo's best aerial ball winner. And as you can see right there, he won that one with uh, enthusiasm. For sure, yeah, he's a rock back there and was a big part of uh, last season's success. Ball played wide, here's Manfoot. Manfoot tries to pick out, looks at Vinnie Bell, sees a diagonal run, chooses not there, plays a good ball to the right side. Buffalo good, doing a good job to keep their shape defensively, really push the uh, eerie possession out wide. Given away by Cleveland though, here's Cicerone. Two on three if they hurry. Cicerone plays a square ball to Fim Wally, gets his ball turned, tries to put a shot on net. It's wide to the right of Spencer Semple, but a good ball into, into Fim Wally's feet. A hard ball to turn on for Fim Wally, but a good counterattack for FC Buffalo, even though it was like two on five. Absolutely, FC Buffalo um, fans this year are gonna really gonna notice whenever Cicerone's on the ball running at a def defense, there's always gonna be an opportunity. It's it's a really exciting, uh, really exciting player to have on your team. One thing that stuck out to me is that he's a tremendous finisher too. Like he not only is he creative right. and fast with the ball at his feet, but uh, as I mentioned in the Erie telecast, he uh, he put 32 of his 54 shots on net for UB, which is just a, a tremendous Thanks. percentage, especially when Excellent. he's. The, the main source of scoring for UB, and uh, you know you can you can tell us in the audience uh, that volley last night was was uh, pretty incredible. Ooh, a push by Marcus Hansen puts Manfoot to the ground. Brendan Murphy has a couple words with the center ref, but it's going to be a free kick for Cleveland just beyond midfield on the right side. Excuse me, I meant uh, Friday night for that volley. There was no FC Buffalo game on Saturday. He might have done some volleying last he night. He could have, yeah, maybe that. in his spare time, yeah. yeah. Looks like it's Sean Sickich taking the free kick. It's hard to tell from here. 
Yep, it's sick. It's taking the free kick for AFC Cleveland. Ball's driven in low. Flicked on by number 14, Chris Fairley. 17, Adam Mitchell tries to chase it down, but it's shielded out nicely by Bobby Ross. And Waleed Cassis cleans up the mess. Brendan Murphy, uh, when speaking to you last night, or uh, before that, I, I forget, but... Uh, Friday night. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, mentioned that, you know, the one part of uh, Waleed Cassis' game that he was a little bit unsure of is his ability to come out and, and you know, collect balls, but he's been very good, especially on Friday and, you know, just now with uh, that opportunity for Cleveland of really coming off his line and collecting uh, dangerous opportunities. Fimo Wally with a good bring down, sees Brian Knapp. Knapp dribbles at the defense, plays Fimo Wally's feet. Fimo Wally tries to keep possession but can't. O'Callaghan up with Marcus Hansen. FC Buffalo appeals for a handball but won't get it. Sick it just back forward for Cleveland. AFC Cleveland and FC Buffalo, Detroit City FC, uh, in the same division of uh, the Great Lakes Conference this year, uh, along with uh, the Fort Pitt Regiment. Uh, four pretty large metro areas with a lot of talent to draw from. So it'll be interesting to see how the uh, how the division shakes out this year with, uh, well, along with Erie as well, uh, with those teams in the same uh, same uh, you know division and playing each other quite often. Tonight's and today's another instance of the Rust Belt Derby, is that right? Yes, yes, I, I think so, Maybe officially or unofficially. I know we yeah. had it for the first uh, first year a couple years ago, but uh, I'm not sure if the fan bases are still collaborating on that or not. Ball played in, headed out by O'Callaghan, tried to keep, keep in play by Chris Fairley, and it sails out of bounds. Another Brian Knapp throw and upcoming here on the right side for FC Buffalo. It's like four blitzers in the box now. Nap heaves towards Tagaloa. Tagaloa tries to flick on. Plays the ball into the area. Looks like it hit the hand of O'Callaghan. The referee says it didn't. Uh, tough to see from oh. up here. Manfoot takes the ball off Allen's feet. Adam Mitchell one on one with Bobby Ross. Bobby Ross first to the ball. A good win by him. Can't clear it though. Manfoot plays the ball. Square picks out fairly one on one here with Kyle Moraldo on the left side. Moraldo sticks him, gets a poke. Ian Mort with a violent win of the ball. He pushes two off. Ian Mort rushing forward now for FC Buffalo. Four on four. Plays the ball for Cicerone. Intercepted by Tommy Beck, who's been everywhere. A beautiful scissors move. Plays the ball into space. Adam Mitchell slow off the jump, however, and the ball goes back to Cassis. Good tackle there by Tommy Beck, number seven of Cleveland. Yes, very good. Stepping up into the play and uh, really springing the uh, sort of counter as, as Buffalo begins to press a bit more. You know, All High was a beautiful venue, Ben, but uh, it's nice having the crowd kind of condensed into this uh, smaller stand. Uh, you really get the feel of... Uh, good rush down the wing. Yeah. Here's Fimo Wally. Picks his head up, tries to send the ball across to Cicerone. It's blocked out of play, but FC Buffalo's second corner kick coming here in the 20th minute. Ross, it seems like even after the Erie game, it took a, a little while for FC Buffalo to hit its stride. It seems like the first, it's kind of happening again today. It seems like FC Buffalo is a little bit more comfortable now um, going forward, attacking players. They're not quite as connecting as well um, in short passes as they were, especially at the midway point of the Erie game. But yeah, you're starting to see the cohesiveness build out of the back. Cicero's ball to the box. It's a goal for Bobby Ross. Yeah. Bobby Ross gets his first of the season off a corner kick from Russell Cicerone. And what a beautifully placed ball. Far post, right on a platter for Ross. Ross, who was on mark too at the back post, yes. had all day just to get his head on, and he smashed it past Semple for a 1-0 lead for FC Buffalo. 21st minute. That's Cicerone's first assist on the season after collecting two goals against Erie in the opener. Bobby Ross is first of the year as well. Special player. 
See how well Cleveland can regroup now. Ian Moore wins a tackle. Little back heel from Brian Knapp. Can he keep the ball in play on the right side? He can. Swings it forward though, just to keep the ball in play. Buffalo is very calm in their own end, on the ball, connecting passes, especially with pressure and uh, you know in tight spaces. It's it's really good to see so far. Um, you know, early on they were like you said a little bit, a little bit disjointed, but now that they're connecting, um, even when they're defending, you, you get the the feeling that there's no panic, there's no you know booted balls. They're trying to play it out of the back with you know quick short passes and, and, and opening up opportunities for you know Cicerone and Hanson to break forward. And you know, FC Buffalo is really getting rewarded for effort too. If you remember what led to that corner, it was a rush down the left wing by Martin Fimo Wally. That's right, yeah. Um, and the first goal against Syria was Cicerone, who was dribbling down the middle and got pulled down that led to Mort's free kick that Hansen tapped in. Right. So it's a lot of creating dangerous plays and creating free kicks, and, and all that hard work is paying off in set piece opportunities like you just saw. Absolutely. Manfoot sprints past Cicerone. Manfoot tries to play the ball square, and it's going to be a free kick. I believe it was a handball yep. on Nico Tagaloa. He definitely caught his uh, forearm. Tagaloa, one of the four uh, Point Loma Nazarene players who came over. Um, one of Brendan Murphy, FC Buffalo's coach's close friends, is an assistant coach at Point Loma Nazarene, and that's how that connection happened. But it's uh, Nico Tagaloa, Christian Wyatt, Tyler Allen, and Val Doppenberg. Those are the four guys from Point Loma who've joined FC Buffalo this year. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great... Uh... Great opportunity from uh, you know Coach Murphy's connections, and and Coach Murphy apparently introduced them to Duff's wings. I've heard that, yes. Yeah. Which, uh, I mean, I, I guess it's good. It's not like they don't have wings in the San Diego area, but I, I guess they enjoyed it a lot more than they enjoyed um, the they wings out in the West. Are they your favorite in the area, Ben? They're not my favorite in the okay. area, which is why I probably would not have suggested that. But well, no offense to Duff's. Duff's actually produces decent wings, unless they're a title sponsor. Yes, correct. <laughs> Manfoot now on the right wing. Swerves the ball into the box. Cassis with a diving save. Dangerous rebounds cleared away by Marcus Hansen, though. Great punch there from Cassis. Russ Cicerone gets a little elbow in there on. <laughs> he's a smaller kid, but he's not afraid to mix it up. And <laughs> no call. It turns into a, a throw in for FC Buffalo. You would have had to think it would have been something. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, refs. <laughs> refs. Sickage steps to the ball. But Fimo Wally keeps possession. Tagalo with a good ball towards Mort. Mort forward to Fimo Wally. O'Callahan's there. 50 50 ball, one by Beck to Manfoot. And Knapp closes in on him. Manfoot, the indoor player with Syracuse, swerves the ball towards Vinnie Bell. A good win by Liam Callahan with his head. Tagaloa pushes off Bell's pressure, has Marcus Hansen, who finds Cicero now on the left wing. One on one, cuts inside, plays the ball. Short to 14, Marcus Hansen, ball into the box. Cleared away by Cleveland. Hansen with a volley. Oh, and it's given up. And a good recovery by Spencer Semple. Conceded a bad rebound. Cicerone yes. seemed like he had a tap in, but Semple recovered just in time to poke the ball away. Yeah, Cicerone really buzzing around that whole sequence uh, with the initial run into the box and uh, the follow up with a potential uh, rebound, like you said. Cicerone First FC Buffalo loves that give and go at the top of the, of the area just to get himself 10. in, sp in Bobby space. Ross. Assists by number seven, Russell Ciceroni. Ross from Ciceroni in the 22nd minute. We're going to get some clarification at halftime on the pronunciation of Cicerone <laughs> or Ciceroni. Soccer, football, same thing. <laughs> Ian Mort, ball at midfield for FC Buffalo. Good tackle by Manfoot. A smart ball by Tagalo, who looks really sharp today, even sharper than he did against Deary. Kyle Moraldo. Short ball to Fimo Wally. Poked away by Tom Beck. Fimo Wally stuffed, and here's Manfoot. Manfoot tries to spin away from pressure. Gets the ball, it's his throw in. Bobby Ross anticipates the throw, however, but here's Manfoot who wins it again. Manfoot plays ahead for Vinnie Bell. Counter attack, a two on one if they hurry. Vinnie Bell chips the ball into Mitchell. He heads the ball just wide. A great ball in by Vinnie Bell with his left. Adam Mitchell heads to the near post, but it goes wide of the frame. You gotta love the the, uh, the mentality for Ross to want to get forward and you know really spring the attack. But that's you saw just there. He got sucked out of position and uh, you know created an opportunity for Cleveland. Luckily, the uh, the shot went wide. Most dangerous player for Cleveland so far has to be Antonio Manfoot. He's doing well in the counter attack. He's really forcing FC Buffalo's defenders to converge on him, which leaves his, his teammates open. And his distribution hasn't been perfect, but he's done enough where he's creating chances for sure for AFC Cleveland. I think uh, the Buffalo fans are kind of recognizing that. Every time he's on the ball, you hear uh, a lot of razzing from the stands. 
can leave it to the Situation Room to, uh, yes. to, to know the opponent and to razz the opponent. Yes. The Situation Room, of course, if you're unfamiliar, is, uh, is FC Buffalo's fan base, and uh, that uh, that's, has a tie into Wolf Blitzer, correct? Uh, from what I understand, yes, uh, Mr. Blitzer did address, uh, you know, Twitter prompts from him to uh, come to a game. Uh, couldn't make it this weekend, but, uh, I don't know, maybe next time for the Kenmore native. Which is kind of frustrating because he was just here, literally on the campus of Canisius <laughs> College yesterday, giving the graduation speech. So, I mean, I'm sure Wolf has places to be and, and stuff well, to do, but... You know, priorities. Yeah. A good win by Mort. Miscommunication between Cicerone and... Marcus Hansen, or Fimo Wally, excuse me. Cicerone dribbles at the defense, tries to play the ball square for Fimo Wally, who wasn't looking for it. Sikic wins it. Sikic plays forward to Mitchell. Mitchell and Callahan. Callahan, shoulder to shoulder. Mitchell pushes him. Callahan wins the ball. Plays the ball down the touch line. Marcus Hansen, square to Cicerone. Cicerone has space. He turns on the Jets. Can he beat O'Callahan to the ball? He can't but he wins a corner kick. Terrific effort from Russ Cicerone on the wing to chase down O'Callaghan, poke the ball off his shin and out of bounds for a corner kick for FC Buffalo. That whole sequence is great for FC Buffalo, winning the ball deep in their own end, playing it up the wing and really uh, you know, connecting passes on the ground and playing, you know, again, calmly and uh, smartly to create those opportunities because once you get it towards Cicerone, he will make something happen. 28th minute, 1-0 FC Buffalo, the lone goal of the game so far off the head of Bobby Ross off a Russ Cicerone corner kick. That came in the 21st minute. Played a bit low. Out for a goal kick. Russ, I think the stands here hold around 2,000, maybe, maybe 1,500 to 2,000, something like that. Health Center for FC Buffalo. Pretty full, well, from what I can see. Uh, you know, FC There's Buffalo no averaged around 1,000 fans a game last year, and you know, this being a World Cup year, they've got, they've got uh, very confident aims to, to exceed that season average. And it was good to see for the league's sake, too. De Detroit City FC drew 26-41, which, oh, which is a new high for them, and the MLS does not seem too far away from them. Yeah, Detroit's an interesting situation. You have multiple ownership groups wanting to uh, get in on the, the big leagues there. Long throw in towards Vinny Bell. Vinny Bell flicks towards Mitchell, but Bobby Ross recovers in time. The ball comes out. And drive low that goes just wide. I believe that was Chris Fairley from the right wing. Cut in with his left. Shot the ball so, yeah. wide of the near post. Yeah, a little bit of a dangerous sequence there. You know, Buffalo's got to, you know, just... Stay switched on and make sure that uh, you know they're not caught flat-footed with these uh, you know these Cleveland possessions. But yeah, Detroit going back, they, uh, there's definitely a lot of interest, a lot of soccer support there. It's uh, you know still a very very large city, and uh, you know in my opinion, Detroit City does everything right uh, in terms of what they're doing in their city, uh, the way that FC Buffalo does it here. So I'm hoping they, they can uh, you know get some attention and have some uh, some some eyes on the uh, the upper divisions. Free kick for FC Buffalo. Seemed like kind of a ticky-tack foul given some of the fouls that have not been called thus far. Right. But regardless, Cicerone stands over it, looks at Andy Hogarth, the Cleveland coach, and looks like there's a little debate over there with the fourth official. Cicerone swings the ball into the box. Callahan heads it away. O'Callahan, excuse me. It's tough with two center backs in the game. One Callahan, the other O'Callahan. <laughs> Situation room not pleased with that foul. Here's Manfoot now, left wing one on one with Ian Mort. Manfoot sees Vinnie Bell. Manfoot gets a talking to from the official. However, he does win the free kick. Yes. Making Bell drop pretty, pretty deep, uh, I'm sorry, pretty shallow within the uh, Cleveland attacking half to really receive that ball. So if Buffalo can kind of contain that. Uh, towards the midfield. Manfoot now one on one. Can he get past Moraldo? He does, but Moraldo gets his shoulder onto the ball. Good tackle. Manfoot stays after it. Ball's poked away briefly by Tagaloa. TJ Welch poked toward Bell. FC Buffalo does nicely. A nice play in traffic there by Marcus Hansen to play a short ball back to Bobby Ross to clear that ball out. Very confident. Yeah, a player like Manfoot's tough. Low center of gravity, very highly skilled. Coming at you from the wing. Yeah, he stands only five foot three, but 
that gives him the whole, like you said, center of gravity advantage. Right. Here's Vinny Bell, Cleveland star forward, one on one, shoots past Bobby Ross, pushes aside Moraldo, shoots the ball towards the far post, hits Liam Callahan in the shoulder, a good block by the Sweet Home native. Ooh. A foul right on the touchline. No call, it's going to be a throw, and Ian Mort wants a foul from it. Throw in, Bobby Ross wins the ball. Here's Karyanis. Karyanis plays the ball square. Dangerous ball in the direction of Mitchell. It doesn't hit him. Bobby Ross is there to sky the ball away with his left foot. Fimo Wally and O'Callahan in the foot race. Callahan uses his body well, however, shields it out, and that's going to be a goal kick. Well done by Dan O'Callahan. Yeah, Cleveland controlling possession a bit more in the past five or so minutes. Uh, really, like you said, playing off of... Uh, Playing off number three of Cleveland uh, to create those opportunities. Vinny Bell checking back and uh, you know creating some problems down the right wing for FC Buffalo. Semple's goal kick, one out of the air by Brian Knapp. Ciceroni pokes it forward, Knapp can't track it down. Here's Karyanis right now, Karyanis, short ball. Tommy Beck gives it away. Mort, square ball to Cicerone. No problem there for TJ Welch, who back heels to Tommy Beck. Martin Hansen puts some high pressure on Dan O'Callaghan, who plays the ball back to Semple. 33rd minute, still 1-0 FC Buffalo here at Dembski Sports Complex. You know, go ahead. I was going to say, Ben, you know, we've got all these... We've got all these uh, nice attacking options up top for FC Buffalo between Fima Wally and uh, Cicerone and Marcus Hansen. Uh, one main name we haven't mentioned so far is Kendall McFadden, who spent some time in the pro tiers with uh, the Rochester Rhinos right down the 90. I think Kendall, Kendall had some, uh, some paperwork issues um, with the Rochester Rhinos in order to get himself eligible here to play for FC Buffalo. And I think that maybe that's one of the reasons why um, we haven't seen him in the active roster today or against Erie. Good weapon to have, though, as the season progresses. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's versatile. He can play in the back. He can play forward. Uh, he's not the strongest finisher, but he's certainly dangerous, especially athletically. Right. Tyler Allen swerves through two, goes to ground, appeals for a foul, doesn't get it. Ball play forward, Liam Callahan. Plays the ball off Chris Fairley and out of bounds. A throw in upcoming for FC Buffalo here on the left wing. Another long throw coming for Brian Knapp. We expect Brian Knapp to play around 50 to 60 minutes a game this year because there's a lot of players who need work, and Knapp's one of those guys who's who's 29, who's the elder statesman he's on the, the team. Man, yes. Yeah, he doesn't quite have the uh, have the stamina maybe that he once did when he was playing professional futsal over in Korea or even playing at UB when he was a, a right. youngster, which is which is seven years ago now. You know, so yeah. it's a uh, yeah, the veterans very well traveled. It's a uh, it's a story you don't very hear very often having a, a pro futsal career in Korea. <laughs> He's a good leader for FC Buffalo and, and definitely like another teacher in addition to, to Murphy and, and the assistant coach Bob Roach. Is, it's, nice, it's always nice to have another teacher, you know? For sure. I mean, you're, you're in the fifth year of this club existing and uh, you know, to have someone like that, to have Brian Knapp who really buys into the, to the, you know, the, 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 the concept of being, you know, the club being for the city and you know, really knowing the history and being involved with the team for a while, uh, it, it's a really, really big asset to have. I can see him being a good mentor for guys like not only Cicerone, but also someone like Nico, Te Nico Tagaloa, who plays, a, plays a similar title role. Sponsor is one of Buffalo's longest soccer supporters, innovators, and family folks. Rich Products is a proud sponsor of FC Buffalo. Yeah, like you're saying, Ben, uh, you know, being a mentor for that type of uh, you know midfield player with a, with a good short passing skills of uh, Nick Tagaloa, absolutely, 100% agree. Ball heaps forward. Perianos can't bring it down. It's fairly now battling one-on-one -on -one with Tyler Allen, who's shielding off with two Royals around him. Plays the ball out. It's still going to be a deep throw-in for Cleveland. No Tommy Schmidt this year for Cleveland. He's, uh, I believe he's on another NPSL club. I think it's the, the Michigan Stars, but don't quote me on that. Okay. A deep throw-in. Headed out, Manfoot right at the top of the 18. Fakes the volley. One on one with Hansen and Tagaloa. They're double teaming him. He's getting quite the attention, Antonio Manfoot is. Dribbles the ball out of play, though, on this crowned field. 
you're saying, uh, Ben, with the Michigan Stars, the, uh, the NPSL in terms of uh, you know competition and, and, and different clubs, it's pretty dynamic. You might have you know a few different clubs in your division each year. Uh, Michigan Stars, to my knowledge, are a uh, youth club, so they have a very deep roster of players to draw from. Uh, and then also kind of around the league, uh, around the conference at least, uh, Lansing United uh, played their first uh, ever home game and drew about 1,000 fans out to, the, uh, to their match. Yeah, that's a good sign. And you can tell there's there's more and more interest in uh, in new clubs stepping in. It, and you can notice last year with Sparta and Zanesville, they may not still be in this division, but and I'm not even sure if they're still existing, but it's just nice to see new teams step in, form clubs, and just kind of try to make it. And, you know, there's, there's teams like Buffalo and teams like Cleveland and, and Detroit, you know, teams that you may not necessarily think would be able to stick as soccer cities, and, and here they are, you know? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, those three places you just mentioned are, are kind of the bedrock of this conference. And, uh, you know, Detroit and Buffalo especially, you're, you're seeing that there's a path to uh, becoming a, a serious soccer player in the region. Through ball to Adam Mitchell. Bobby Ross steps in front of him, shields it off, and Cassis cleans the ball up. Good ball into space and a good win there by T.J. Welch of Cleveland. A little bit too much pace, though, on the ball but it went through in a good shield by Bobby Ross away from danger. Mm -hmm. Ian Moore tough on the tackle. No whistle, that's a throw for FC Buffalo. A very typical Ian Moore play, a strong win on the ball. Cicerone plays Hanson through. Semple's there, however, off his line to make the catch. Overlapping run here by Zach Martin. Manfoot tries to play him. Can't get enough pace on it though. Moraldo gets a piece. It's going to be a throw in upcoming, drawing some boos from the FC Buffalo fans. Manfoot leaves the ball for Beck. Looks like the Cleveland left back, who's actually played all over the place today, is going to heave this one in. Moraldo's been up to the challenge though. Um... There hasn't been a real opportunity where I, I, I've seen them, you know, I've seen Moraldo be outclassed by, by, by Manfoot and, uh, you know, really have problems. He's, he's contained him fairly well for, for you know, the, the strength of the left side of Cleveland's attack. Um, hasn't been too much of a problem for Moraldo so far. And I think he'll certainly face the test as this game wears on, too. Just with Vinnie Bell shading in that direction and Manfoot streaking down that side and Tommy Beck getting up from the back. Those are three players that are that are not easy to deal with and somebody you have to keep an eye on as you're organizing your back line and for Moraldo to, to keep an eye on. A shot by Ian Mort off the crossbar. Great strike by Ian Mort from distance. Ian Mort, no stranger to the score sheet. Scoring a good number of goals last year for Buffalo from that midfield position. I'm not sure if Semple got a good look at that ball or not because he kind of reached his hand up and he might have gotten a small piece of it, but it really cleaned off the crossbar. Oh, yeah. he, he was beaten. Yep, absolutely. You'll have to forgive me as uh, if I pause before I say man foot. I'm, I'm conditioned as someone who graduated high school in 2004 to say man tooth. So. <laughs> Is that a Dorothy reference? Yes, ah. she's the same. Yep. Tyler Allen swings the ball forward. Fimoali and Hanson both look at it, headed out. Ciceroni, though, at the top of the box. Gets two attention. It's clipped down hard by Tom Beck. He looks at the official, doesn't get a call. These are the games that are going to make Ross Ciceroni a better player, though. Games where he's pushed to the ground, where he's hammered over and over. Maybe he doesn't necessarily get calls. Yeah, he's, he's playing with uh, you know, a lot of his peers in college, but also a lot of you know, grown men who... Um... You know, physically, they're they're gonna throw you around if you're if you're not you know up to up to the task. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely gonna do well for him and his his goal of becoming a stronger physical player. Good win by Perianos. Bobby Ross commits himself. Vinny Bell one on one with Callahan now. Bobby Ross gets back. Bell plays the ball into space. A good ball wide. Chris Fairley now one on one with Tyler Allen right wing. Cuts back towards the end line. Swerves the ball in. It's overcast. It's flicked away by Bob by Brian Knapp. Excuse me. Brian Knapp in the right place at the right time to uh, to quell a pretty dangerous opportunity. Absolutely. Cicerone turns nicely away from pressure with that one-touch ball. Yep. Fimo Ali can't keep it though. O'Callaghan gets it, plays Vinnie Bell. Vinnie Bell flicks the ball into space, but a little bit ahead of O'Callaghan, and the ball goes back to Cassis. 
Yeah, there's there's confidence and there's got to be a, a bit of safety too. Um, a lot of good combination, but you can't you can't be too cheap with giving it away right there, just because you know Cleveland has the ability to counter and, and you know punish you on that counter with guys like Benny Bell off top. One on one between Ian Mort and Sikic. Mort tries to shove past him. Sikic shields him off the ball and clears the ball away. A throw in for FC Buffalo. Cleveland was appealing for a handball there on Ian Morton. It seemed like a pretty clear handball, but the AR, I believe, was shielded a little bit, maybe by Andy Hogarth accidentally, right. the Cleveland coach. Always seems Knapp has these throw-ins just right off the penalty area, just maybe a four or five yards ahead of it, right, right in the opposition third. And they practice these pretty regularly. You'll see, you'll see Knapp throw the ball in, in the direction of Ian Mort's head. Mort has options. He can head the ball back towards the back post. He can head the ball down towards Cicerone at the top of the box. They work on these set pieces all the time, and it's it's definitely, it's almost like having a free kick or a corner kick or something like that. Like having Naps throwing and then having Mort's aerial ability is, is pretty important and a pretty a pretty good luxury. Absolutely. A little bit of a conversation with the referee and Bobby Ross before that throw in went in. I think it might have been connected to that. Uh, lunging tackle earlier, about a few minutes ago, uh, where Ross uh, dispossessed one of the uh, Cleveland attackers. Ross has kind of lived life on the edge so far. He uh, conceded a PK against Erie going to ground when maybe he shouldn't have. So it's a habit that's worth watching and maybe one that he'll need to, to tone down a little bit going forward. Right. Cicerone stands over the ball, drives the ball into the box towards Bobby Ross again, but this time Semple gets a piece and punches it aside. Mort keeps the ball in play, shields off Tommy Beck. Ball in, headed away by Zach Martin. Perianis, Perianis with a touch, now fairly up the right wing. Pushes the ball past Bobby Ross, but he shields him away. Then turns upfield, a good turn by Bobby Ross. Sees Tagaloa, Tagaloa tries to poke past O'Callaghan, O'Callaghan gets a piece out of play. Two minutes remain here in the first half, plus stoppage time. one nothing FC Buffalo. Here's Waleed Cassis. Plays to Liam Callahan. Callahan. Fans stick around for halftime in the Western New York Immediate Care halftime game. Left Shane Majeris' Western New York Immediate Care team of Kenmore Soccer to take the field. Kind of an uncharacteristic giveaway there by Liam Callahan. Now it's Cleveland possession. Tommy back with more, cl more closing in on him. Moore wins the ball from him. Rushes forward, help him Martin. A physical challenge by TJ Welch, who puts himself right out of the play, and Mort keeps it. Mort finds Ciceroni. Ciceroni rolls back from trouble one on one, but Zach Martin ends up winning it. Almost a, a give and go that worked between Ciceroni and Fima Wally, but it didn't quite pan out. Here's Manfoot on the move, a terrific tackle by Kyle Moraldo. Manfoot's down, writhing. Now he's going to stand up at the fears. We're into stoppage time. Perianis plays the ball forward, but it's an errant pass by Perianis. Yeah, very strong tackle from Kyle Moraldo. Uh, there will be a minimum of one minute of stoppage time. Good fullback from uh, now formerly Chase Brooks uh, Niagara program. Dangerous moment for Cassis. <laughs> Vinny Bell almost takes the ball away from him, and Cassis clears the ball out of danger. But a scary moment from their goalkeeper with a goal goalkeeper with the ball at his feet. Yeah. Dangerous ball into the box, headed into the net. Vinny Bell sends the ball in. It's headed in by, it appears to be, I can't quite see his number. He turns around. Yeah. By Adam Mitchell, a fellow striker of Vinny Bell. Vinny Bell sent the ball in. Adam Mitchell, unmarked at the top of the six, nods the ball in. Not a ton on it, but went inside the far post, and this game is evened up. And yeah. stoppage time in the first half. Yeah, tough one to give up right before the half. So as you were saying, a little bit of uh, panic from Cassis earlier. Kind of kept the ball in the uh, Buffalo third, and uh, you know they got they got ahead on it, and now we got a tie game. Should be just seconds remaining here in the first half. And probably just one second. That'll do it for halftime. Half -time Winter score, FC Buffalo 1 and Cleveland 1. About a fair result from the play. 1-1. One, one. 
Two goals in the first half. The first one coming in the 21st minute from Bobby Ross off a corner from Rusta Cerrone. Cleveland answered back though in stoppage time in the first half. A header by Adam Mitchell off a cross from Vinnie Bell. We'll talk to you in the second half. We'll talk to you in about 10 minutes. I'm Ben Sujimoto. This is Russ Andalina. We're here on WNYMedia.net. We'll talk to you shortly.